Right. So Mike's question is about checking for two moving averages crossing each other from different time frames. So I don't actually have a multi time frame moving average on uh, installed on, into my NinjaTrader. So I I haven't found a free one uh, available out there in the ecosystem yet. So I don't actually have an an actual example to provide here. So we'll just have to you know imagine that you know one of these one of these moving averages is coming from a different time frame here so right so let's say um you know this um this larger moving average here is say coming from a five minute chart right and the faster ones coming from this coming from this one minute chart so mike's question is you know how can we you know check for crossovers you know, uh, of a moving average from different time frames, right? So uh, most people have noticed, right, that you can take, you know, a crossover solver here. And I'm going to switch over to the solvers tab here, right? And so we have, so there's that crossover solver that I just added. And we can also, you know, within Bloodhound, we can add, oops, I hit copy. We can add secondary time frames here. You know, so I can add a five minute time frame to Bloodhound. And then I can take this crossover solver and move it onto that five minute chart. All right. Um, and so within this crossover solver, you know, I could. I can change, yeah, I can change the moving average, moving averages, and let's see here. I did a, what did I do? I did an EMA twenty. Yeah, the faster one is the EMA twenty on my chart, and the slower one, slower EMA is a fifty-five period. All right. So we can put in our moving averages, um, and we can put the crossover solver on the five minute time frame, right? But the whole, the entire crossover solver is operating on the five minute chart, right? So that means both EMAs are also on that five minute time frame. So Mike's question is how can we put, you know, one of these moving averages on a different time frame? Well, to do that, you need a moving average, you know, that has that that can put its that comes from a different time frame. So you'll need a custom moving average, you know, that's set to whatever time frame you want it, you know, you want it to be functioning on. Right. So, you know, the point is is that the this secondary, you know, chart data puts the entire solver on that time frame right so it's not mixing and matching so if you want to mix and match time frames right um, simply put you'll need your your indicator to um, to put itself so you'll need a multi time frame moving average right and so that way you could compare you know the a moving average you know, so in this case, you know, this EMA 20, you know, it's going to be on the default time frame, which is this one minute chart here, right? So the default time frame is whatever chart Bloodhound's running on. So Bloodhound is running on a one minute chart. So that's what the default time frame is, right? So, you know, so one of these moving averages can be running on the one minute chart. And if you want another moving average to run on a different time frame, well, you need a custom moving average that will pull in whatever time frame you want, right? So you can't take a solver and split it onto two different time frames, right? So that's how you can compare, you know, one indicator to another indicator that's on a different time frame is, you know, you'll need a custom indicator that operates on that other time frame. So Bloodhound is not going to modify indicators for you. 
right? It's the the duty of you know creating that custom indicator um, for multiple time frames um, to do that. You know, it doesn't matter if you're looking for a crossover, you know, or maybe you want to compare, you know, the price data of one time frame, you know, to the to an indicator on another time frame, you know, that you know that indicator that you want on the other time frame well that indicator itself needs to load up that other time frame and, and function on that other time frame there. Hmm. All right. Yeah. So Dan saying, yeah, he had a custom indicator created for him and wasn't that big of a deal. Okay. Yeah, it shouldn't be. Um, I know there are indicators out there from various vendors, you know, moving average indicators out there, you know, that operate or allow you to input a different time frame, you know, so your moving average can uh, can calculate from another time frame. So they are out there, but but um, I haven't found any free ones that I could use, you know, um, in my workshop here. So the ones I've seen, the, you know, they're all paid for. So yeah, so I know it's not it's uh, easy to find them, uh, but the only indicators that I use in this workshop are basically freely available. So.